can't emphasize enough how important it is to do groundwork both in a halter and in a bit if you are in under saddle because you're going to warm yourself up for those trail riding situations that could get hairy if you don't have your horse's feet and mind. Uh, so the warm up is so imperative before you head out on the trail. Uh, be sure, so, so important to know where your horse's mind is so you know how to ride the trail ride that day. Uh, so it is so important to put the bridle and saddle on and do the groundwork techniques just like I showed you in the other video. Uh, this is going to be just using one side of the, of the bridle at a time. I use split reins. That's important because I can work one side of the horse. I don't want to be operating with the other side of the horse's brain because it wouldn't make sense to the horse. Our brains are connected with a strip of, of tissue to connect the two hemispheres. The horse lacks that organ. So if I start using this off side rein, I'm talking to the other side of the brain and they can't even see me. So it makes much less sense to them. I need to be operating on the side of their brain that they can see. I always say operate one set of aids at a time. Use one rein or the other, not both at the same time. That doesn't always make sense to the horse unless they are finished. So again, Pretend that I had done groundwork with this mare already with the saddle and the bridle on. So I do ask for the horse to find her feet while I mount. I might rub her up and breathe out. <sighs> My energy is low. That helps a horse's mind when you're trying to help them find their feet. So now that I am up, I want to seat myself. And I might actually ask for the horse to turn loose or bend that head and neck left and right. I want her to become relaxed. If she is tight, like I thought maybe once I switched sides there, she was a little tight. But I want, look at how nice she comes along. Um, I can, if she was tight, she's not ready for a trail ride. I want her to be, if she was stiff, that might lead to other problems along the line. She's coming all the way there. That's okay if she moves a little. I'm not gonna try to stop her and pull back. Um, next, it's the hindquarters. I do wanna slide down and place my leg behind the cinch here. And you see that I'm rubbing it a little bit. And I want that hindquarter to move. I bring this rein to my hip I bring this leg back at position two. What I, we have position one and two. Two controls the hind end. Position one controls the front end. So I split it up. I get it more involved for the horse to understand. I want to ride each feet in each foot individually. I'm gonna slide down. Bring my leg back. Sit up straight. I brace this leg. I'm gonna maybe rub this leg on her a little bit. I, if she moves a little quicker, that's fine. I'm gonna keep it on her until she slows down. <sighs> Breathe out. She found her feet again. Reward. I don't have to go around forever. I might ask for two steps and, and ask for a stop. But when I ask for a stop, I wanna give her the best advantage and breathe out while I go. <sighs> I might not pull on both reins, but my body's gonna ask her to stop. Next. I'm gonna ask her with my go forward aids. Tilt my pelvis, bring both legs in. I'm gonna ask for a circle, one rein at a time. Bring her around. And I'm riding that front end forward and around. Release, front end forward and around. Release, forward, front end forward and around. Release, if I think my horse is, is responding well, I might bring in my leg here to help and there we go. Um, I had to slow her down a bit and we got a nice turn on the haunches where I was moving that shoulder over. Watch that again. There we go. Uh, very nice foot. There we go. There. Very nice.
nice mobilization of the shoulders. I want to give myself time to work both directions. I want the horse to become limber before I go on a trail ride. So I'm going to forward and around. I ask her to go forward, go forward, and I bring in my rein. One brain at a time. I have this rein, inside rein, inside rein, and then I might bring in my neck rein and my leg. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, I didn't ask for that much. Now, I might send her forward again. It's fine. Oh, breathe out. Two reins softly on. Never pull on two reins. Unless it's an emergency and you, you think you have to. But if it's an emergency, I would say take one rein and do something a little different. But this horse responded to soft aids. The softer I keep my aids, the better this horse will be. If I start bringing in harsh aids, I'm desensitizing my horse to me riding it. I am untraining the horse the harder I bring in my aids. So I want to stay soft. If the horse is not responding and you lose your idea of what you, you start to panic, one thing, bring in this rein, shorten it up, bring it to your hip. And, and that way you're not pulling on your horse's face. You're gonna softly bring in this rein and you're gonna disengage. The horse isn't responding, do this one activity to save your butt. And they will relax as long as they're, they're flexing their head and neck and sending their hindquarters over, they will stop. This is a disengage. It takes energy out of the horse. Uh, An engagement is different. That's where we move the horse forward. And I will demonstrate a little bit of that now. So now that I have effectively bent the head and neck, moved the shoulder, moved the hindquarter, I have one more thing. It's the rib cage. So when I move the horse forward this time, I'm going to be effectively using a, uh, a, a side pass aid or a leg yield aid to help this horse engage the core. Uh, again, they will be bent like a banana or a half moon shape. That's going to be very important for balance in gait later on. It's going to be my gating aid. So I'm gonna tilt my pelvis, two legs on, ride her forward. I'm gonna bring in my inside rein. Just touch it up towards my outside shoulder. So here's that line, but I'm not bending her completely. This is a soft aid. So there's my rein aid. I also need a leg aid to make her move over. It's gonna be my inside leg aid. There we go. See how she, she does it. Yield the best, but I have to reward that sideways movement, but in the least bit. She tried for me. I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna use my leg first this time, and then my hand. I'm gonna even look this way. Look at how her body will side pass over. I both, I have to feel both, if I want to side pass, I have to feel her haunch and her shoulder both move over. Um, this is limbering her rib cage. She has to first be limber in her shoulder, her head and neck, and her hindquarter before she is able to limber up in her rib cage. Again, this will put a horse in a half moon shape. Why is that imperative for gait? Well, a horse that is perfectly straight cannot engage their inside hind leg to lift themselves up for balance. Uh, that is different than another way of training, which would be to pull their head up. But again, I say never ever pull on your horse. We want to engage the inside hind leg, form that half moon or banana shape in the horse's spine, and they will drive up into a balanced gait. That is the difference. I don't want to pull on them to invert their spine. If I pull up on the reins, their spine drops and they lose control of their hind end. Uh, so that does not engage them. That is an inverted gait. The when, now watch me now. I'm going to move forward around the round pen and engage this horse. I'm gonna use the same aids 
I showed you. Horsemanship techniques to hone in a better gated trail horse. 